Hey, hey, besties and bosses. Happy, happy Tuesday. I never know how long this thing is going to take for me actually to go live, but I think we are live. How is everyone doing? I got a super crazy message from Facebook as we were streaming live from Zoom. So we will have to see. I see myself. So we'll see how, how this works and how the technology goes. Any of y'all who go live on Facebook as well will have to let me know if this is happening for you as well. Something about the API. We also have a really big lag, it seems like today. So as I'm catching myself on the replay, so if you're saying hi or if you're popping in questions later, know there is a little bit of a time play on my end, but I will absolutely read and respond to everything as it comes through. So first, hi, happy Tuesday. How's everyone's week going? How are you doing? It is glorious here. We're in the middle of spring in Brooklyn and New York City. I love this time of year. It's still light out and the weather is just, it's so happy making. This and fall, probably my favorite. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way, but I love when the seasons change and I love when it's kind of that like crisp weather where you can still wear a jacket or a sweater without sweating to death, but you know, you could almost get away with the t-shirt depending on your tolerance for, for the temperature. Stephanie, hi, how are you? Do you know, you popped into my head today, totally random, but I was, um, we were from the Q and A that you were on, we were, um, doing some stuff on the back end and you totally popped into my mind. So, um, just love getting to see you here full circle, but you were, you were on my mat. All right. So today's conversation I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you all. This is a conversation that's very present for me. It's one I've been having quite a bit with peers, with colleagues, with friends of mine who are business owners. It's also a conversation I've had with quite a few of my clients recently. So any of my clients watching now on the replay, you're going to think I'm talking about you. I swear I'm not. This has been, it's been kind of in the zeitgeist. It's been coming up for so many people. And this is one of those conversations I feel like happens behind the scenes a lot, but not always forward facing. So I wanted to bring it to all of you so we could talk about it here because I think this is one of those things that if you're not aware of, it can really spin you out and create self-sabotage in your business. And if you have a little more awareness around what we're gonna chat about today, I think that awareness can do so much for you to be able to catch self-sabotage before it happens, but it's such a counterintuitive self-sabotage. I think it's really easy to overlook. So obviously we're talking about the uncomfortable truth about success and how to avoid self-sabotage. That's the name of it. And what I was sharing for those of you who are on my email list or for those of you who signed up for this, Rick says, hey, Rick. Um, hey, Rick, nice to see you. Congratulations on your success, my friend. We're going to get Smart Drive test there too with your awesome help. Oh, you fucking know we are. We are so going to get Smart Drive test there. Um, nice to have you here and thank you for the the congrats and for your, your teeing me up. So what I shared in the email, if you're on my list when I was talking about what we're going to chat about today. I'm celebrating my highest cash month to date from, what are we in April? So last month I had a 38K cash month. And that's, I mean, wherever you're at in business, some of you might be making more, some of you might be making less. It's really not about the number. What I'm always so, what lights me up so much and what makes me so happy about that is it's 38K cash doing work my way without Facebook ads, without, not there's anything wrong with ads, but, you know, building my business organically and doing it all from one-on-one -on -one work, which I've been told over and over again, just isn't possible. So it makes me so happy to see I'm building my business my way. And that not only do I have a business that's making great sustainable income, we brought in a little over 96K we're already past like 110K this year, but about 96K the first three quarters. But what makes me so happy is it's doing work I genuinely love. If you're one of my clients, you know, I'm sure you can tell, like, I just love my clients. I love my people. I love my work. I love my team. I love my life. I live where I live. Like there's all of these wonderful, beautiful things. And the reason I'm prefacing all of this with you is that all sounds amazing and glorious and it is, and it's a little bit of a mind fuck. And I think what people don't talk enough about when you wake up one day and you're like, oh my gosh, I have created everything on my vision board and then some, I love my work. I'm making money in a way that feels good. I'm working with people I adore. I have a team supporting me. I have a partner that I love, like all of these things. It can be very uncomfortable. And I think people don't talk about it because that can be a little bit like, oh my gosh, are you really going to complain about that or talk about that? But I want to really normalize that because I see it so, so, so much with my clients as they're creating success. 
And if we don't normalize it, it's really easy to make it wrong and spin out. And the other thing I wanted to talk about and normalize is the very common upper limiting that can happen when things are going good because of what we're talking about, because this isn't normalized. And because it's like, like the concept of success can be very uncomfortable which I know can sound crazy to some of you, but hear me out on this. Um, our brains are not wired for success. Your brain is not wired to create success. It's really wired to be a survival mechanism. Your brain is wired to keep you alive, to keep you safe, to look out for threats and danger, to spend its time looking for like, where's the problem? And how can I you know, try to keep you safe? It's literally designed to conserve calories, which is why we get stuck in patterns and loop and replay the past so often because the brain just wants to save energy in case a threat happens and it creates these shortcuts, meaning it really isn't set up for success. It really isn't set up for what we have in modern day, which is so many of us are like, we're not running away from tigers and bears and having to like forage on the land to stay alive. We all have a very different, you know, whatever level of success you might have, it's very different than, you know, when our brains were first forming, very different for all of us. And the brain is just not set up for that. And what happens, and this is the reason I want to have a conversation about it, and then I'm going to share some really common ways I see this show up and how I see this show up in business. But what happens is, and I have probably talked about this book in different ways, and I'm going to reference it again. If you haven't read it, it's a really short read, and I highly recommend The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. If you're a client of mine, you know, I think I've mentioned Gay Hendricks on like every call in the past week that's been that, that present. But Gay Hendricks talks a lot about something called upper limiting. You may or may not have heard this concept before, but it's generally what we're talking about here and this concept that we all have a threshold for how much we allow ourselves to receive, how much success is comfortable. And when you pass that threshold, your brain is like, um, excuse me, this is outside my comfort zone. What the fuck? And it wants to self-sabotage and bring you back down to what feels comfortable and safe. And I personally believe a lot of this has to do with the fact that our brains are really wired for survival and not wired for success. I mean, we can rewire them for success, but I think we have to be really conscious of this. And so what I find happen so often, the reason I want to bring this to all of you, because I really just don't think people chat about this. They chat about here's all the wins, but not, and here's some of the stuff that can come up. I find for every single person I know creating success, whether it's a client of mine or a friend of mine, people hit a certain threshold of success and their system is like, what the heck? This is so uncomfortable and I don't know what to do with this. And I just want to find a way to get back to comfortable. And the brain almost like subconsciously looks for problems to create, to bring in some safety. Cause it's sort of like, if your brain is, you have to think brain is wired to keep you safe. Brain is wired to scan the horizon, to look for threats. When the brain finds a threat, it's like, ah, I did it. I did my job. It's like, I, I joke with clients. It's a hungry, hungry hippo looking for problems. And as soon as it's found one, it's satisfied. So you have to think if you have everything you want, you're super happy, you're creating success. The brain is like, um, there must be something I'm missing. Like, where is it? And it's going to start looking for things. And oftentimes for many of us, this is when we start creating some self-sabotaging patterns because it's a way to bring your system back down to what feels comfortable and what feels safe. Let me know if this is making sense and I'll go into some examples. Rick says, I know in the past I've sabotaged some of my own success. This is so important. Thank you for sharing that so openly and transparently. It really is so important. And I know, again, for some of you who might be in the building phase of business, this might seem like it's not important to you right now. But remember, you're, if you're out there in business, like success has varying degrees, you might think you're not there yet. You're still creating success. This is still irrelevant conversation for you because this is this is what our brain does and you don't have to share if you're watching now or on the replay but for those of you who feel feel comfortable I'd be curious to hear if you've ever experienced this or if you ever have thought like oh you know maybe I am a little scared of success or when I've had success it has felt really uncomfortable because I think that's part of the same parcel right we can be scared of success which I know can also sound counterintuitive but I think for many people when we think about what success entails, there can be a lot of fear wrapped up in, in that. I have a lot of my clients journal around the fears that they associate with success 
And it's really interesting to ask yourself, what are some of those fears? What are you worried will happen if you create the success you want? And then on the flip side, when you do create success, I think it can create a lot of discomfort and both sides, right? You can sabotage pre-success based on those fears. You can also sabotage when you're in sitting in a successful moment. And just some ways I see this show up. And then what I wanted to do today is really show um, and break down some ways I see this show up in business and the sabotage show up specifically in business because what I find, so some common ways outside of business I see this show up. One of my patterns in the past, I've gotten so much better at catching, but it used to be anytime I booked a client or had a big income win, I wanted to pick a fight with my man. And it was like, it was almost like uncanny how like nothing could be wrong, but it was absolutely my system where it's like, everything is so good. Let's just create a problem here. And I know someone watching is like, oh yeah, I've done that before. I have clients who will wake up and they're like, I don't understand why I have, I'm just feeling so sad. I feel so sad. I want to sleep all day. And generally when we like, there's no other reason. And this is very different from when you're experiencing something like clinical depression. But a lot of times when I'm speaking with clients, this is really matching up and coinciding with a really big win in their business. So I think that's another way it can it can show up. Um, I've seen I've seen friends um, and clients have unexpected bills show up. It's a really common one, um, or like chaos or drama show up in their life as soon as things are running really smoothly. I have a friend who has a very successful business. And for a while, it was like, it was like crazy how every time she hit a really, we're talking multi-million dollar business, like every time she hit a really big win, there was like some, like she would crash, like have an accident with her car, always okay and safe. But like something would always happen that was like a really big thing to have to solve for and pay for. So I share this just to show like, these are the crazy things our brain will do because our brain is just like, mm, I just want to be safe and cozy and comfortable. And this is outside of that arena. And what I find happens, the more you're aware of this and the more you up level, your brain just gets sneakier with this kind of stuff and sneakier with the ways it wants to keep us safe, especially if you've done any kind of work around this. And so what I find happens for a lot of my clients, and I'll share how this shows up for me as well, because I think it's helpful to have a transparent conversation around this. I find oftentimes we're like, oh, okay, I see how I'm doing this outside of business. And it's almost like we can address and shift those things. And then what happens is it just gets transferred into the business. And so I want to talk through three areas. I see how when things are going well in business, these are the three places I see are very, very common to essentially self-sabotage. And I really see this as a part of, I mean, you can do this on either side, right? I see this as a part of the upper limiting, but I also think this can happen when you have a bit of fear of success. I'm just seeing the comments here. Nicole says, hi, Nicole says, I have to practice gratitude. Heck yes to the gratitude. Gratitude is a whole different conversation, but it really is applicable here as well, because the more we have gratitude, I mean, so many studies there in terms of how much that rewires our brain for positivity and to feel better and to combat depression and to expand our capacity to receive and have. They've also like such a side note here, but since Nicole brought it up, for everyone watching, because I know gratitude is one of those things that it almost seems too easy and too good to be true, go Google it. There's so much research and data on this. And it also is really simple, which is beautiful. But there's a lot of studies that also link gratitude and people who practice gratitude to things like making more money and being better at sales and having more creativity. So it's really interesting to see that link there and how it directly impacts the business. I need a lot of water there. Okay. So let's chat. Um, feel free to show, throw in reflections, questions as we're we're talking about this. And if you, again, no one has to out themselves, but if there is, as we're talking through this, if you're like, oh, I've totally done this before, either on the fear of success side of things or in terms of like success feels uncomfortable side of things, if there's something you're like, this is something I tend to do, this is my pattern. I think it's helpful to normalize for everyone because I think what can happen in this experience, because I don't think very many people talk about this when you're in it, a, it's hard to notice because if you don't have awareness around something, it's hard to spot it. Sort of like without a mirror, it's hard to know if you have spinach in your teeth, right? It's just a lot easier when you have a mirror or you have some awareness around things. But I also think there's a way where we think we're the only ones who are self-sabotaging or the, we're the only ones with patterns like this, or we're the only ones with these fears. 
I think it's so helpful to normalize these things. I have the gift of, I see behind the scenes of so many businesses all day, every day throughout the week. So I get to see this through so many people and I get to share that with my clients. But if you're working at home, especially during COVID, by yourself, I think it's so easy to think, oh my gosh, I am the only one. So for anyone who does want to share, I think it's nice because you'll start to see you're not the only one. This is so, so human and so normal. That way you don't make yourself wrong. And it's more just like, oh, isn't that interesting? My brain wants to do this thing. Like that is fascinating. And how can I just notice this? And how can I shift this? Instead of, oh my gosh, I'm doing something wrong. Or here's another problem I have to solve. So really important there to normalize, but also to see this isn't something you're doing wrong. It's more just like, oh, isn't that fascinating? Our brains are just really, really interesting things. Okay, so three places I can see this show up in business and common ways I see entrepreneurs sabotage when they're scared of success or feeling the success. One of the easiest places to kind of transfer and create problems when there are problems and to self-sabotage, I find for pretty much every business owner is to try to bring that in with your clients or with your customers. So, and what I mean by that is essentially creating problems or creating drama within. So instead of like with a loved one or with your family or with your partner, taking this in and thinking that there are problems happening with your clients and customers. And the reason I want to highlight this first is this is a place where I really want to invite you to create some awareness as if this is a pattern that shows up for you, because when you start creating problems or solving problems that don't exist for your clients and customers, that is also a really great way to make business feel hard, business feel heavy, to unintentionally sabotage the relationship with a client. Um, I'll give some examples of how this, this looks, but I would say this is it's kind of like the easiest, it's just like such easy, if you're in your business working all day long, it's such an easy place to go. And I think what's sneaky about it, and I think why it's so easy to do is the brain can have you believe this is real. There's really a problem and a fire to put out here. And it can feel very, like you're doing something really good by solving that problem. And I think that's a little bit of where that comfort comes in. And sort of like, oh, well, now I feel like I'm doing something like this feels really uncomfortable here, but now I'm doing something like now I'm solving something. So I must be safe. And what we want to notice is sometimes there's nothing to solve and you're already safe. And sometimes solving problems that don't exist will actually create a real problem. That's where the self-sabotage jumps in. Just seeing if we don't think there's any comments. Um, so this can look like I think a really easy way this happens is creating more client work than you have. So uh, if you are someone who does done for you, done for you projects, if you do anything like where you create work for clients, if you do any sort of, I communicate with clients between calls, if you like any sort of work you're doing with clients, a really easy place I see this where I'll chat with clients about this and they're working way more than they need to when we're looking at their hours and they're feeling a little overwhelmed and burnt out. A lot of times this is what's happening. Not a lot of times, but some of the time this is what's happening. I shouldn't say this is all the time where client work is just getting, it's so important now and it's becoming like, this is the thing, like there's a problem here and client work is expanding and expanding and expanding and you know, things are taking twice as long as they need to. Um, literally the amount of time they're working on things or I find, um, I call it helicopter, being a helicopter coach or a helicopter um, business owner, a helicopter service provider. I probably talked about this in a live stream before, but this is another really common pattern I see, especially for those of you who might be lean towards the people pleasing or lean towards, um, not, not just having the like a sense of self-trust and boundaries around your clients and customers. I think a really easy way to have that upper limit and to create a problem with clients is getting to that place where it's like, a hel you know what a helicopter parent is, right? I definitely did a live on this. I'm gonna have to find it and link on this, um, this topic overall, but helicopter parents are like over watching their kids, like to make sure nothing bad happens to them. And we all know, I'm sure you know someone who's a helicopter parent who you can love and adore, but you can see that's all coming from them freaking out, right? Them being in fear. And it generally doesn't serve their kids because then their kids don't have the space to actually learn lessons and to grow. And I think this is a way we can take this and bring it into the business, right? 
you're freaking out, you're feeling that fear, we're upper limiting, really easy place to go is like suddenly now you're hovering and helicoptering clients because like you don't want anything bad to happen there. I mean, if that one, if that one makes sense for y'all. Um, I think another really easy place I see this show up with clients for my clients is thinking that there are, their clients are mad at them or there's a problem there with their client or their client isn't, their client's going to leave or not pay or that they must secretly be unhappy with them. And what I offer here is, well, yeah, sometimes as a business owner, you're, I mean, there are times my, if I'm doing my job correctly as a coach on any given day, there are times my clients are not thrilled with me because I have to ask them hard questions and lovingly nudge and push them. That's not what we're talking about here. And if you're a service provider, there are going to be times clients are legitimately frustrated or there are you're solving problems so that you have to help them solve problems. Like those are normal, normal, normal things in business, especially if you are in the business of helping people solve problems. But I'm talking here about that like narrative that can happen in the mind and that worry that can happen where it's like, this client must be pissed at me. This client, fill in the blank in the story there. And I think this can be very, very common, especially when things are going well, because it's like, I can't find anything else wrong it's so easy for the brain to start creating stories and to convince you that's true because here's the really crazy thing about the brain and really fascinating thing. Your brain will just look for evidence to prove whatever story you are telling is true. And if you look hard enough, you can find evidence for anything. If you look hard enough, you can find evidence that someone is pissed at you or make them subconsciously create that, right? But we can, we can pretty much find evidence for anything. So I really want to invite any of you, if you think, oh, I might be on either side, right? I'm scared of success or I'm feeling success and that's feeling uncomfortable. Just noticing if this is, this might be your upper limiting self-sabotage of choice and noticing like, wait, am I like trying to create problems that don't exist here with my clients? And am I convincing myself this is true and finding evidence? And just remembering it's really, really like, if you look for evidence, you can just always, always find it, especially especially, especially, especially if you're in the business of helping people solve problems, right? Um, and just seeing that doesn't actually mean there's a problem with you or a problem with you as a service provider. That generally means your people are in the right place because you can help them with those problems. Let's see if we have, um, Rebecca says, love this topic. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad this is resonating. Hey, Courtney, nice to see you. It's so funny, these come in so delayed. Rick says, this topic sounds like the movie, The Matrix. The first version of The Matrix were epic failures because they were perfect to work. The Matrix needed conflict and struggle. I haven't seen The Matrix in forever. I honestly don't remember the movie, but this is exactly that, where it's so fascinating how when everything is too perfect and too good and too easy, it's exactly that thing. Like the brain is just like, this can't actually be okay. Like it's like looking for the trap door that doesn't exist until it can create it. And then as soon as there's conflict and struggle, the brain is like, oh, okay. See, we knew it was there. We found it. Now that we found it, we can chill and relax. I was literally having a conversation with a client this morning about this very thing where it's just fascinating how the brain wants to do that. And the brain is just like looking for it, like almost equates struggle with safety. I think especially, and this is something I think is just helpful to understand too, especially if you've had challenge or struggle and it has felt challenging building your business. I think what can happen then when you're on the other side and you're feeling some success and things are feeling a little easier I think it's very easy for the brain to equate, but we got here because we struggled, because we worked hard, because things were challenging. And to make this link an equation, struggle, hard work equals success. And I think it's really important to separate that out and see while you are capable and like all the kudos and celebrations for working through the challenge points and you are capable of doing hard things as um, Glennon Doyle would say, like absolutely. And sometimes it can be really, challenging at the start. We talked about that in last week's live stream and not to discount like those time gaps where it, it legitimately can be challenging in business, but noticing that that is not the equation for what created your success. Oftentimes it's finding the path of least resistance. Oftentimes it's looking for like, how can I make this feel good and easier? 
and really being mindful not to create that link. Because I think to what Rick was saying, that can also then create that pattern in the brain when it's like, wait, this feels uncomfortable now because I really have the story and equation that struggle and conflict equals success. Struggle and conflict equals safety. And that's part of what I want to invite everyone to think about and just to notice and have awareness around and also look at how can I dismantle this. The other thing there's like a little side tangent, but I think the other thing there is you can also create success staying in struggle and conflict. It's not like you can't, like, I don't, I'm not someone who believes you, like, if you're not high vibe all the time, or if you're in struggle and conflict, you can't create success from that. I just don't know how great that feels and how sustainable that is and how long-term anyone wants to be in struggle and conflict and make, like, I don't think any of us got in the business of making money the hardest, most difficult, most conflicting, struggling way possible. I think most of us are in business because we want to do work we love and we want to make money on our terms. So I think there's just something interesting there as well, where it's like, wait, wait a second. It doesn't have to be this way. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Um, Rick, thank you for, for that. Cause that gave me a lovely little, little piece to add in there. That will actually give us a perfect segue into another place. I see this show up in business. So with the upper limiting, with the self-sabotage, when it's like, oh, this feels really uncomfortable. Things are going well. I have a pinch me life. I have a pinch me business, or I'm feeling some of that fear of success. I think another really easy place for business owners who take that self-sabotage to take that like story that I have to struggle. I have to work hard. There needs to be conflict for success is in the back end of your business. I think also in the front end of your business, but I see this a lot in the back end of people's businesses. Um, I think we've got some dogs howling behind us. Um, I, I want there to be a full moon and it to be like wolves howling, but I think they're just dogs. So any of you, again, feel free. You don't have to share, but feel free if you to share if you've ever experienced this. I think when we're talking about the back end of business, and this is somewhere it shows up for me, so I'll be very transparent. So you can see this is so normal. I'm celebrating my biggest month in business, and I totally had to catch myself in some of this. I'll, I'll share the two places I notice this the most. Um, so for me in the back end of my business, the easiest place for me to get into self-sabotage and for me to upper limit is with content. And to take something that I've been doing for years that's relatively seamless and easy for me and that, you know, I can kind of like rinse and repeat. It is such an easy place for me to suddenly feel like, oh my gosh, I need to make this super hard. I need to double check things. I need to edit it. I need to like just create a lot more work than actually needs to be done. And I know this about myself. So it's also a very easy thing for me to notice and to be like, oh, wait, this is interesting. What, what's happening here? Is this even really about the content? Is there really anything going on here? Or are we just trying to work really hard? And are we trying to like, you know, are we self-sabotaging a little bit here? But I think that's a really easy place on the back end of business for, for people to get into. They call it just that, that, tick, that tinkering, that like, I need to redo things 500 times. I, I need to make more work, even though my work is done. And I think that comes again, if we talk about this idea that it can feel wildly uncomfortable to create success and to normalize that and to normalize, like it can literally feel uncomfortable in your body to be sitting in success, especially when so much of the brain's or the body's system and pattern is we are safe if we keep doing, if we think about a fear response, a fear response is fight, flight, freeze. The fight response is do, 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 right? It doesn't always have to be like get into a fight with someone. That is a very doing energy. And that is a doing energy that tells your body, that tells your brain, okay, now we're safe. This is how we create safety. So I think it's very easy if we're thinking and if we're looking like playing on this idea of upper limiting and it either doesn't feel safe to create success because I have some fears coming up around it, or it feels very uncomfortable sitting in success, sitting in, you know, everything I've ever wanted, such an easy place as a fear response, or when you're, you know, feeling that discomfort, such an easy place to go into is into that doing, especially if you also have a story of, I need to work hard to make money, or I need to struggle to make money, or I need to struggle to create success, or I need to work hard to create success, which I think for so many of us, that's a bit of a story and belief, even if you're consciously aware of it, we have um, subconsciously, especially if you've grown up, you know, I know for me, this is definitely one I've had to unpack in different ways. I grew up in a family that's, you know, really hardworking, 
people. My dad was an entrepreneur. He was very hardworking. I think there's a lot of society that applauds hard work. And we talk a lot about hustling. I think, I mean, there's so many layers. That's almost a whole nother live stream. But I think noticing there are reasons for this and just such an easy place to put this and then feel like, oh, but, but this makes sense. Of course I need to redo this course that I created that is perfectly good. I just chatted with a client about this. Um, beautiful course that's selling, that's doing well, like this want to redo all the video modules on it. It's a little bit of what we're talking about here or, oh my gosh, like creating problems with content, need to edit five things times or reading, redoing your website copy that's converting and working really well for like the 17th time. Um, what's another one that's, um, I think just over like wanting to overcomplicate systems and processes, wanting to um, like tinker with, with those really, really um, common. And so I say this again to normalize, if you're like, oh, like that's me, no shame, super normal. I do it, my clients do it, my friends do it. I think the win here is starting to notice like, wait, but this actually might be a form of self-sabotage and how can you start to notice it so you can shift it and take that contrary action, sit in that discomfort. Like, can you stretch your capacity for the discomfort of, success instead of trying to hit that easy button, that self-soothing button that might feel good in the moment. It feels good to do, but it actually shuts down your capacity to receive success and often also has you self-sabotage because now you're burnt out. Now you're working all the time. Let's see here to see if we have, because I know they're coming in slowly. Let me know. Comments, reflections, always open to all, all the things. All right, so the last place I see, I think the back end, I'll, I'll say with the front end um, of business, I think same thing here when you're like the way you can create overworking tendencies or wanting to tinker or wanting to affect, uh, like perfect things. I think the same can happen on the front end of your business. So we were chatting a lot about things that like, it's very easy, especially if you have a team and systems and docs, like this is when you know, a client will come to me and when we're talking about the back end of the business, like, well, first, like now I need to like organize all of my folders and like have a whole, I don't know, system with my folders. Like that's a, like just noticing like, but do you really, like, is that really where your time needs to go right this moment? Or is that a way like you're trying to self-soothe the discomfort? And then on the front end, it might be things like, and I think this is the same thing where it's like making things harder than they need to be. That could be on your sales conversations. That could be when you're engaging with people online or in Facebook groups like this. And so just noticing, just like, can can we all create some awareness and some space where it's like, am I doing this? Is this something that's coming up for me on either side of success? On the, I have a fear of success. And so my brain just wants to protect me, even though I want it subconsciously, like I have a little bit of a fear of success because I think it means I'm gonna to have to work all the time or because it means I'm gonna to have to work even more than I am right now, or I think it comes with responsibility or I think people will judge me or whatever that might be, or because you're sitting in success and you're like, no one told me this is really uncomfortable, just starting to notice these things. All right, so the last place, um, this isn't the last place, there are many places this can show up, but another, the last common place I really see this show up for clients, and this is, I'll share how this shows up for me as well, um, just so we can have like three easy places for you to, to start to notice and create awareness is with team. I'm just seeing, I don't think we have, oh wait, no comments there. Um, so I think team is, it's sort of, sort of the same thing as with clients. I think, I honestly think the team thing is almost like the easiest place to, like once you're starting to build a team, to take that discomfort and to create some of that drama or to overcomplicate or to create problems that don't exist and to really hit that upper limit. Especially again, this goes back to, especially if you have a story or a pattern where it's like things need to be hard or I'm supposed to struggle or I can't receive support or I need to do things on my own or I need to prove I can do things on my own. I think there's so many different stories that can be underpinning when the self-sabotage can show up with team. And I say this again to normalize, I think especially in our online space for, if you are here, if you're hanging out with me, I think most of us didn't get into business thinking, and then I'm gonna have a big team that supports me. If anything, you're like, be great once I start to build a team, but it's sort of not part of the beginning to build a business 
for most people, like the thought process. And so I think it's really interesting. I say this a lot, I think, as my clients are going from like building and growing into scaling, a lot of the conversations become absolutely mostly mindset. And then a lot of it becomes about delegating and team because I think, I think this just aren't things we are taught in school. I don't think these are things that are even talked about a ton in the online space. I don't think a ton of people are having conversations about that. I was just having a conversation with a friend about this where she's like, no one teaches you this team stuff. Um, so I think there's that piece of it. And then I think what it's sort of that, um, oh, who says the quote, what got you here won't get you where you want to go next. I think a lot of what gets you to the place where you're ready to have a team, which often is like, I can be scrappy. I can do things on my own. Um, I can figure this out. I Maybe it is a little hard work. Maybe it is a little like working through those challenges is almost the opposite of what is needed and required to have a team, manage a team, let them support you, to have a team successfully support you in your business growth. So again, just to normalize, because I don't think people talk about this all the time. They just talk about the win side of things. So like just to normalize, not to create stories that it has to be harder challenging, but simply to normalize. And because of that, I think this is such an easy place if you're having that upper limit or that fear of success to create the self-sabotage. I think a team just very, 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 very easy place to do that. So I think some ways that this can show up, ways I've seen with for my clients, ways I've seen for friends and ways I have seen for myself. Um, one of it can just overall be a resistance to receiving support. And I say this is self-sabotage because literally there is a point in your business. Okay, I have a few clients who have scaled really high and don't need team based because of their business model. But for the majority of business owners, there is a point when you are scaling where you cannot grow and scale anymore without investing in team. And you start, I, I have clients look at this all the time, like it starts to cost your business money if you're trying to do everything yourself. And so I think like that is just like the first place where it's like starting, like resisting, receiving support, resisting, investing in support, having this whole story, like I can do it myself. I need to prove I can do it myself. Um, no one can do this better than me. I think that's one of the most common things, like all of us, like no one can do this better than me. Um, trying to think of some other, other things I hear a lot, but I would say those are the most common and just noticing like where that's coming from and if that's really serving you or if that's because actually you're, you're hitting that upper limit a little bit and there's a little bit of a pattern there and just checking in with that. Another place I see the self-sabotage come in, especially when people are hitting those big wins and it's sort of like, everything is so good. I have to find a problem so I can kind of self-soothe. Like, oh, I found that thing. Let me like bring myself back down to comfortable is really being overly picky with team stuff or putting, <laughs> one of my friends calls this putting your fingers in all the pots or putting your fingers in the pots where they don't belong. And this is, this is what I will do. So um, if my, if any of my team is watching this, I love you. Um, you know, I do this and I, I will call myself out on that, but it's such an easy thing to do where, what I mean by that is when you bring on team, they generally have roles and generally the idea, so you can be supported to focus on your things is to trust them and let them do their thing and jump in and delegate when you need to, and, you know, lead when you need to, but then let them do their thing. And I think what can be, it's sort of like the tinkering on the back end, the want, re, wanting to rewrite your content or rewrite the sales page or make things harder. The same thing can happen with team where it's like, wanting things to be redone 500 times because I don't do this one, thankfully, um, because you would do it differently or starting to like need to check on things or like take take things off of someone's plate so that you can do it for them or like like kind of keeping your like dabbling in some of the things that you just shouldn't be doing anymore. I, I joke with my my team that I just shouldn't be allowed in Canva anymore. Like I just really shouldn't at this point. And that's, that's one of the ways when I know there's a good chance I've got a little bit of this going on when it's like, I just feel this need that I need to jump in and help with things inside Canva. Nothing wrong with Canva if you're making things in Canva at this point, but I have five people on my team. I have people who are supporting this, who are far better at it than me, but also who are like, I'm, I'm literally putting a cog in the wheel and with our system and process, if I'm jumping in and like trying to mess with things in there. 
So just starting to notice there, because I think this is, again, a really, really easy place to have that upper limit show up and really easy place to think and to tell yourself, like, this is at, like this is something you really need to do. I was just chatting about this with a friend where it's like that sense of urgency where it's like, but no, this is really, really important. And being able to take that step back and check in with like, but is this really important? And is there really a problem here? And is there really something that requires your attention that needs to be solved for? Or are you wildly uncomfortable because things are going well? Or are you really trying to push, like create that, like, I need to work hard. I need to struggle. I can't be supported story. I can't have success on my terms. Like, are you feeding into one of those stories and patterns? Is that what's really going on? And really, of course, sometimes there are legitimately teen things. Another friend I'm talking about where there's legitimately teen things going on for her. Sometimes that is, you know, really the case, absolutely. But I think really being able to take that step back and notice what's going on so that you're not unintentionally self-sabotaging your success on, on either side of it. No scene here. Um, Rick says, LOL, hiring a video editor. CEOs don't edit their own videos, girl. I don't know what you're talking about, Rick. Uh, <laughs> um, we can always we can always put a, a note out for a video editor. Rick says, in keeping with hiring a team, that is, absolutely. Um, <laughs> that cracked me up. Um, well, 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 well said. And again, this is not to say that you, I, I don't know who's watching here, right? So being very mindful, depending on where you're at, this isn't to say that if some of these things are showing up for you, it is always self-sabotage, but I think it's a really helpful thing to see. These are very common, normal ways. I see all of us as business owners and I see for my clients, like want to muddy up the waters when they're really calm. And just starting to create some awareness around that and also just starting to normalize that this is what the human brain wants to do. And the more you can see like, oh, my brain is not designed for success. I mean, it is designed for success and that our brains are fucking remarkable and they can do so many incredible things. But it's also like we're wired, we're, we're animals at the end of the day who are really wired for survival. And I think the more we can create that awareness, the easier it's also to get into that observer mode and to notice and to observe when we're wanting to get into these patterns and to step back and like, hmm, isn't that interesting? Is this actually serving me? A question I love, this comes from Gay Hendricks. If you're, I think I've probably thrown this at every well, not every client. I've thrown this at a lot of clients this week because it's been so present in the zeitgeist. But and I don't know exactly how Gay Hendrick says this. It's in the Big Leap, but he talks about it's a form of the question: What good am I blocking from coming in right now, or what good am I preventing from coming in right now? And I think that can be a really great question to play with if you think, "Hmm, I might be upper limiting. I might be trying to hit that easy button and self soothing." I know it doesn't seem like self-soothing, but self-soothing in that way where it's like, it feels wildly uncomfortable to create success and I'm trying to bring myself back down to what feels normal, what feels safe, what feels comfortable. I think a really great thing to pause and to pattern interrupt is to literally ask yourself, what good am I sitting on top of? What good is in front of my face right now that I am blocking from coming in, that I am trying to prevent from coming in? Always interesting to see what comes up. And I think it can also help shift that perspective for you. It's a question I love to ask all the time. I also think outside of this, even if you're not in that self-sabotage, if you're feeling frustrated with business, I think this is a great question to ask anyway. What I find for so many people is we're already sitting on the pot of gold. We're just looking somewhere else for it. And we don't realize we're already sitting on it. We're looking for someone like another rainbow, a secret magic rainbow that gets you to the pot of gold. And it's like your ass is already right on top of it. And if you would just look and see, like you're already sitting on everything you want um, or it's right in front of you or um, it's right under your feet. You know, if you just shuffle your feet, I feel like there's a quote about that. So I think just another way to play with that question, a little different than what we're talking about today, but it's a really great way to play with what's already in front of you that you're missing. And then with what we're talking about today with the upper limiting, with the self-sabotage, if you're noticing that coming up, checking in with what good am I preventing from coming in? What good is here? What good is trying to come in? And really just interesting to notice I'm like, oh, I like, I just really don't want to let everything be good right now. Isn't that interesting? And then the other thing I like to play with in terms of the question here. So 
Gay Hendricks has a quote, I think it's something along the lines of, I expand my capacity to receive success, abundance, and love, and I inspire others to do the same. It's something, something like that, which I love as a mantra, but what I really like to play with and ask myself is how can I expand my capacity to receive the good stuff? And with that, how can I expand my capacity essentially for sitting in the discomfort that can come with receiving the good stuff? And I say that because, and I know I talked about this on my podcast on a recent episode, I think for, I, I mean, I talk about this all the time. I think so often everything we all want, everything you want is sitting on the other side of discomfort, the uncomfortable action, being willing to sit in discomfort. I think if you look at anyone who is successful, the big difference between people who are successful and people who don't have what they want, I think is people who are successful they're just willing to stretch their capacity for discomfort and they're willing to sit in discomfort longer. I know I talk about this all the time, but it's so fucking true. And so I think a really great question, especially when we're playing with this idea of like, wait, success can be uncomfortable. We can just normalize this. It can be really uncomfortable when you have everything you want, when things feel really good is can't like, how can you stretch that capacity? How can you stretch your capacity for the good? And how can you stretch your capacity to sit in what is uncomfortable to sit in that discomfort? And that is, I think, where all the magic is. All right, I'm seeing if we have any other questions. Otherwise, I'm I'm going to wrap us up. I will also let you know we have a free training coming up at the end of this month. Well, we don't think we did we have one. We did have one last month. So we have one coming up at the end of this month as well. We are going to be diving into 96K in 90 days my way, the lessons you can learn about making money on your terms. So I'm celebrating 96K in 90 days, as we talked about. And I really want to share and highlight some of those lessons I learned with all of you, really give you a behind the scenes and some takeaways. And really talk about this specifically through the lens of making money on your terms because that is the thing I'm most excited about always. I really think it's not just about the money you make, but how you make your money that matters and how you make your money that matters for how you feel and how you're going to be able to sustain it. I don't think anyone here wants to be a one hit wonder. I think everyone here wants to create sustainability in their business and have something that they love and build it on their terms. So that's what we'll be diving into. I'll make sure we drop a link for that. I'm just trying to think if we have any other announcements. Oh, and then if you are a podcast listener, thank you, by the way, for listening. I've been loving getting feedback comments from some of you. A loving reminder, if you are so kind as to leave us a review, we do pick a win, uh, someone every month to receive a free coaching session. I don't offer single coaching sessions outside of my coaching intensives. So it's a really great way to get a free coaching session. Um, we've already, because the podcast has been out a couple months, we've already given away a few of those a few of those sessions they've been really fun so just a reminder there for for anyone who might want to snag a coaching session um marie says hey there made it we are just wrapping up so you'll have to catch us on the replay and let me know your thoughts but i'm so happy to have you and to i feel like i can see you but i can't see you but i can i can feel you here y'all thank you for hanging hey timothy nice to see you as well thank you all for being here thanks for hanging if you're watching on the replay as well thank you let me know if you got any questions I love you and I will be back next week with another topic for you. Bye y'all.